If the only thing you know about the Ming Dynasty is that they made nice vases, then you need this Quiz Academy guide to the Chinese dynasties. At the end of this video, we'll give you a foolproof way of remembering the order of the major dynasties. This is the Quiz Academy guide to things every quizzer needs to know about Chinese dynasties. There were 83 dynasties and 559 emperors in Chinese history over a period of 4,000 years. And while there are 10 to 12 dynasties you must know for quiz purposes, this video will cover more than that, including some chaotic periods. The first Chinese dynasty dates to over 4,000 years ago, and that was the Xie, who ruled from around 2100 BC to 1766 BC. That makes them contemporaneous with the Minoans on Crete, the Indus Valley Civilization, Middle Kingdom Egypt, and the writing of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Due to a lack of written accounts, most of what we know is myth and legend. In his book Historical Memories, Sima Qian said that the Shia had 17 kings, the first of whom was Yu the Great and the last was Jie. What we know for sure about the Shia is that they established a dynastic principle in China, a template for the next 4,000 years of Chinese history. Sima Qian tells us that it was King Jia's tyrannical rule that led to his and his dynasty's overthrow. The people to overthrow him were the Shang. The Shang Dynasty ruled from around 1766 BCE to 1047 BCE. It's important throughout this video to remember that there were rarely neat handovers between dynasties, so many of the dates are imprecise, and often there were multiple dynasties vying for power. The Shang ruled much of northeastern China from their capital Anyang. They ruled at the same time as Mycenae, New Kingdom Egypt, the Assyrians, and the Hittites. The Shang are the first dynasty for which we have solid historical evidence. Shang Tang had been building his power base and stopped paying tribute to the Xie, and after the decisive battle of Ming Tiao, the Shang seized power. It was a highly hierarchical militaristic Bronze Age society with a king at the pinnacle. One of the most famous burials from the period is that of Fu Hao, a queen and military leader of the Shang. The first Chinese religion emerged during this period, the Shang Ti, as did the first Chinese writing, which has been found on oracle bones that were used to divine the future. Throughout this video, beware that some of the people mentioned are known by other names, which leads us to a bonus fact. One of the other names of the Shang is Wu Tang. There are a lot of people you could know about with this dynasty, but key ones are Shang Tang, the first king, Fu Hao, who was a queen and military leader. Wu Ding was the longest reigning king, and Fu Hao is thought to have been one of his queens. The last of the Shang emperors was Zhou Wang. The dynasty supposedly fell to Zhou Wang's tyranny and cruelty, provoking a rebellion led by Zhang Zia. However, as we shall see, such justifications were written into the DNA of Chinese history by the next dynasty. The Zhou dynasty ruled for nearly 800 years, from 1047 BCE to 256 BCE, and expanded Chinese territory. Ruling for such a long time, they were contemporaneous with many civilizations, including the Etruscans, the early Roman Republic, the city-states of Sparta and Athens, the Persian Empire, and the Olmec civilization in South America. They conquered the Shang from their power base in modern Shangxi province. The Zhou introduced the Fengjian system, which in some respects was akin to feudalism in Europe, a divide and conquer system of patronage and loyalty. They also introduced the concept of the Mandate of Heaven, a principle that not only justified the divinely granted rule of emperors, but also said that if they were overthrown, that was also the will of God. Rulers were not given an unconditional right to rule, and if they ruled poorly, they forfeited their mandate and the people had a right to rebel. Natural disasters such as famines and flood could also be seen as a sign that the mandate had been withdrawn by God and precipitate a rebellion. Throughout the subsequent history of China, the mandate of heaven was used to justify regime change. The Zhou period was a golden era for philosophy and literature. Confucius wrote the Analects and Lao Tzu wrote the Tao Te Ching, the foundation of Taoism. While in the later years of the Zhou, Sun Tzu wrote the art of war. With 800 years of history, there are far too many people of significance to know about, but King Wu, the first king, is worth knowing, and Confucius and Lao Tzu are essential. Towards the end of the dynasty, the Zhou moved their capital and their realm became increasingly unstable, with the Zhou ruling in name only while others fought for power, in the so-called Spring and Autumn period and the Warring States period. The ultimate victors of the power struggle were the short-lived but highly influential Qin. The Qin only ruled for 15 years, from 221 to 206 BCE, but their significance was massive. They were contemporary with Maurya in India, the Seleucid Empire, Hellenistic Greece, and the Roman Republic. It was a period of further expansion and major work, such as the start of the Great Wall and road building. They rose to power during the period of warring states, emerging victorious and dominant. 
A century before they rose to power, the Qin statesman Shang Yan had instigated the rule of law to ensure that all received justice and he standardised weights and measures as well. While he came to a very unpleasant end, pulled apart by five horses, the blueprint for Qin rule was laid and when the Qin came to power, legalism and standardisation were hallmarks of their rule. The first emperor of the Qin was also the emperor buried with the famous terracotta warriors. That emperor was Qin Shi Huang, an energetic unifier who tried to homogenise the country, centralising its administration, standardising weights and measures, and the written language as well. His death, however, saw his successors unable to maintain Qin rule, and the empire was conquered and fractured into 18 states by Jiang Yu. The Han Dynasty ruled from 206 BCE to 220 CE, contemporaneous with the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire, Hellenistic Greece, and Ptolemaic Egypt. It was a dynasty that saw further territorial expansion in all directions. Over the 18 states vying for power as the Qin Empire crumbled, the two main contenders were the Chu and the Han. Their rivalry is so well remembered that in China, the two sides were Chinese chessboard and named after them. And it was the Han that won the battle for power. They ushered in a period of innovation. Their westward expansion and trade led to the creation of the Silk Road. They installed Confucianism as the state philosophy. Contact with India led to Buddhism and Buddhist teachings reaching China. A Roman embassy was even established in the capital Luoyang in 166 at the behest of Antoninus Pius. The state was professionalised with civil service appointments achieved on merit through a special university. It was the era in which paper was invented and Chinese calligraphy developed as an art form. It was also an era of innovation in warfare. Liu Bang, who had been born into a peasant family, was the founding emperor of the Han, but like the founder of the Qin before him, his reign was short, just seven years. It was also the era of Sima Qian, known as the Grand Historian, who produced the histories of the earlier dynasties. Uprisings throughout the empire brought down the Han and brought about the Three Kingdoms period, one of the bloodiest periods in Chinese history. From 220 to 280, three kingdoms fought for the throne, the Wu, Wei and Shu. The Jin dynasty seized the kingdom of Wei, expelling the Cao family, and later conquered the Wu. But this unification didn't last long, and warrior tribes conquered the north, establishing the so-called 16 kingdoms. Remnants of the Jin court fled from the north to the south and re-established the Jin court at Jian Kang, where the dynasty limped on for another century to be followed by a century and a half of civil war. Significant dynasties in the Sixteen Kingdoms period include the Western and Eastern Jin and the Northern Wei, but there are also Northern and Southern dynastic struggles at play. In the late 6th century it was Yang Jian who usurped the Northern Zhou throne and emerged victorious, founding the Sui dynasty. The Sui were another short-lived dynasty, lasting just 37 years. They ruled at the time of the Mayans, the Gupta Empire and the Sassanid Caliphate. Yang Jian, also known as Emperor Wen of Sui, reunified the country and established Buddhism as the state religion. The empire was further expanded in this period. The major legacies of the dynasty were the building of the Grand Canal, the standardisation of currency and further work on the Great Wall. There were only two emperors, Wen, who unified the country, and Yang, who saw the dynasty collapse. Wen had bankrupted the state with his major infrastructure projects and his policies of forced labour and conscription were extremely unpopular. The Sui were overthrown by Li Yuan who established the Tang dynasty in their place. The Tang ruled for almost three centuries from 618 to 907 CE. They were contemporary with the Mayans, the Umayyad Caliphate and the early Byzantine Empire. The Tang had been a prominent family under the Sui and took advantage of discontent to seize power under Li Yuan. Li Yuan only ruled for a few years before being deposed by his son, Li Ximin, later known as Tang Taizong. He is considered as one of the greatest rulers in Chinese history. It was a dynasty that saw greater contact with the outside world than before, partly through the re-establishment of the Silk Road. The printing press and gunpowder were invented, and Chinese influence extended to Korea and Japan. It was also during the Tang Dynasty that the only Empress of China, Wu Zetian or Wu Zhao, made her mark. Wu Zetian was born in 64 and ruled the whole country for almost half a century in an attempt to forge a new dynasty. Many of the finest Chinese poets were born during the Tang period, including Li Bai, Du Fu, Wang Wei and Bai Zhu Vi, among many others. It was also the period when the Buddhist monk Zhuangzhang travelled to India and returned with a collection of Buddhist texts. This was later recorded in the Ming Dynasty in the work Journey to the West. In 751, the Tang were defeated at the Battle of Talas by the Abbasid Caliphate. And in 755, the Anlu Shan Rebellion left the dynasty weakened. 
Finally, in 907, Zhu Wen, a military governor, forced the emperor to abdicate and took the throne for himself. He proclaimed himself first emperor of the Liang dynasty, one of the dynasties in a period of five dynasties and ten kingdoms. There were five dynasties that vied for power in the north of China, including the Liang, who had overthrown the Tang. And there were ten kingdoms fighting for control of the south. In 916, Katanes from the north conquered the northern dynasties and established the Liao dynasty. With China once more divided, the Song dynasty came to power in 960. They ruled at the time of the Vikings, Normans, the foundation of the Holy Roman Empire, and the Abbasid Caliphate. Song Taizu reunified much of the country, though due to the ongoing conflict, their territory was less than that of their predecessors. Paper money was introduced during the Song dynasty, and perhaps, because of the ongoing power struggles, gunpowder was weaponized. Culturally, this was the dynasty that introduced foot binding, and the arts and science flourished. Song Taizu was the first emperor. When the north of the empire was overrun by the Jin and the court moved south, Gao Zong was the first emperor of the southern Song, while Zhao Bing was the last emperor of the dynasty. He was a seven-year-old boy who reigned for less than a year, and along with a general jumped to his death from a cliff after defeat to the Mongols at the Battle of Yamen. The Yuan dynasty ruled for a century from 1271 to 1368, putting them around the same time as the late Byzantine Empire, the middle of the Holy Roman Empire, the reign of the Plantagenet dynasty in England, and Mansa Musa and the Kingdom of Mali. By the middle of the 13th century, the Mongols had conquered North China, Central Asia and Russia, and even reached the Indus River Valley to the south. The ambitious Genghis Khan set about expanding his territory to the Chinese mainland. In 1234, the Mongols overthrew the Jin Kingdom and opened the door to unifying China. In 1271, a grandson of Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan, or Emperor Shizu, changed the dynastic title to the Yuan, and founded its capital at Daedu, present-day Beijing. The Mongols completed their conquest by defeating the Southern Song in 1276, and for the first time, China was under foreign control. It was also a time of innovation, as Guo Zhoujing recalculated the calendar to produce a new calendar that was only 26 seconds off the modern Gregorian calendar. During this period, the epic story The Water Margin was written. Key people of the Yuan include Genghis Khan for his foundational conquests, Kublai Khan, Marco Polo who visited the court of Kublai Khan, and Zhu Yuanzhan who forced the Yuan out of China. In the late years of the Yuan dynasty, political corruption and taxation caused a succession of peasant uprisings, while a series of natural disasters and plagues caused the people to believe that Yuan had lost the mandate of heaven. In 1368, the leader of the Red Turban Rebellion, Zhu Yuanzhang, conquered the Yuan's capital, Daedu. The Yuan dynasty collapsed, with the last Yuan territory falling in 1381. Zhu Yuanzhang founded the Ming dynasty that ruled from 1368 to 1644. That puts him in the same time period as the Incas and Aztecs, and the rise of the Ottoman and Mughal empires. Zhu Yuanzhang re-established ethnic Chinese rule of China. During the Ming period, many of the finest buildings were built, including the Forbidden City in Beijing. It was a period of expansion and maritime exploration, with Zhong He leading fleets of merchant ships to Indonesia, India, Arabia, and Africa. International trade flourished, as seen by the popularity of Chinese porcelain in the West. In return, China received payment in silver and moved to silver coinage. This was also the period that saw the completion of the Great Wall of China. Key figures include Zhu Yuanzhang, Zhong He, and Chong Jun. The Ming were overthrown by a rebellion led by Li Zichong, with the Emperor Chong Jun committing suicide in a park near the Forbidden City when Beijing fell. The Ming were replaced by the very short-lived Shun Dynasty. The last imperial dynasty of China was the Qing, who ruled from 1644 until 1912, meaning they were contemporaneous with a period in Britain, from the Stuarts to the British Empire, the Edo period in Japan, and in France from the Ancien Regime of Louis XIV to the French Third Republic. The Qing invaded from Manchuria, conquering both the Shun dynasty and the Ming in the south. They brought with them Manchu customs such as the pigtail. They expanded China's territory to include a larger area than any other dynasty, and they admitted foreign trading posts on their territory. The early years of the dynasty were led by Dorgon, who acted as a regent to Shunji, the first emperor. Dorgon died in mysterious circumstances, coincidentally, or perhaps not, just as Shunji was about to come of age. Kangxi was the second Qing emperor whose 61 years in power were the longest of any emperor of any dynasty. His rule saw him consolidate the country's borders from external threats and consolidate power internally. The dynasty began with an underage emperor and ended with one. Puyi was five when revolution gripped the country. The closing years of the dynasty were beset with military defeats at the hands of foreign powers, such as Britain in the Opium Wars, which also resulted in greater foreign influence within the country. Defeat at the hands of Japan caused a humiliating loss of territory. 
Discontent at the Manchu rulers and the lack of reforms compounded the impact of external forces on the country, and the Xinhai Revolution of 1911-12 saw the end of dynastic rule in China. The Republic of China lasted until 1949, its key figures being Sun Yat-sen and Chiang Kai-shek, but the Chinese Civil War that started in 1927 and lasted until the Communist Party were victorious in 1949 sealed the final transfer of power to date in Chinese history, with Mao Zedong the first leader of the People's Republic of China. As promised, here's an easy way to remember the order of the main Chinese dynasties. If you can get this song stuck in your head, you will never go wrong. Shang Zhou Qin Han, Shang Zhou Qin Han, Sui Tang Son, Sui Tang Song, Yuan Mingqing Republic, Yuan Mingqing Republic, Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong. Apologies for my lack of singing ability there. As a quizzy, you must know the ten major dynasties and their order. You should know the key people and be able to associate them with their dynasty. Key developments and likewise be able to know when they occurred. You should know what else in history the dynasties were contemporaneous with, allowing you to be able to place them in a broader historical context. Knowing their rise and fall will help you to remember the relationships between dynasties and also other periods such as the Three Kingdoms period. You could learn all dynasties, all rulers and all of the key events and battles, but that is specialist knowledge and unlikely to come up often. There is lots of information online about Chinese history, but for a good general introduction check out the Museum of Chinese Art and Ethnography. And if there's anything else you'd like us to do a Quiz Academy on, please put a comment down below and we will see what we can do. And why not check out these other videos in the Quiz Academy series?